Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to talk about Azure Functions at a very basic level. My name is Ruju and I'm a Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft. So what is Azure Function? If I go by the definition written in the official documentation, I will read it out. It is a serverless solution that allows you to write less code, maintain less infrastructure and save on costs. Instead of worrying about deploying and maintaining servers, the cloud infra provides all the up-to-date resources needed to keep your applications running. So essentially it means that low maintenance, code deployment in a scenario where you have no access to the server, neither you need to worry about them or maintain and manage. So that's about Azure Function. Think about a typical business case where you are trying to convert your currency values to a rate specified by uh, an authority. So you decide that you will pick up the date from a specific, um, the conversion rate from a specific date and you want to convert them. That's a process. That's kind of a logic you have written. So if you enter a certain input value, it will do some calculation and give you back the output value. So that's the kind of small piece of code we mean to say. So in the function, I wanted to call out a few things. You should not be doing a lot of complex stuff. If you really want to build a complex, heavy API, then you should take different approach, use other services. But if you are building a simple API, and don't want to spend a lot of time on deploying and designing for that API, you can easily go for function. Functions are very good for integration solutions, especially when you are using logic apps. You can call a function in between inside the logic app in one of its uh, iterations, and then you can actually do the calculation. So if you have to massage the data, you get a JSON input, and you want to convert that JSON into something else, and then make it, let's say, um, um, data which can be accepted by your end out um, container, then you should use function for those activities. So function is wherever you need to write a small piece of code and execute it on a uh, on an ad hoc basis. Go for it. Now, a couple of use case scenarios I want to highlight here is that it can help you build API that we talked about. Once a file is uploaded, you can process the file. So there are triggers available in function which allows you to monitor the Azure storage, blob storage, and tell you when a new file is uploaded. Uh, you can then trigger the function and then function will process the file. You can build a serverless workflow. We talked about how you can integrate a function within a logic app uh, in an Azure context, and then you can respond to a database changes. Imagine that you have to pick up a newly inserted data every time somebody else updates the database. For example, if it is a product um, catalog sort of database and your vendors are having access to that database and they're uploading or updating that data. You know, just monitoring that so that whenever there is some new product coming in or old product going away, you need to also update them in your inventory system. So if that kind of workflow model you are trying to build, you can have a simple database trigger, which will call the function whenever there is a change with no or minimum configuration. You can run scheduled tasks. So you can use cron jobs in function. So you can say that every one hour in a day I can run. I can run, let's say, every 30th of my month. So let's say a payroll processing. Uh, you can do all those cron jobs. So it supports all the cron notif um, formatting. Uh, and then you can create a reliable message queue system. So especially in the CQRS pattern of cloud, which is command query responsibility pattern, where you do something in a distributed environment and then you leave it like that. And then somebody else will pick it up. You don't need to create a chain of actions. So you can have a disconnected environment. You can build those things. Uh, you can analyze the IoT data stream which means that your sensors are constantly dumping the data into Event Hub. You can have function 
which will pick up the, the value from the event hub and process it and put it in the backend system or do something else. You can do the process the real time data in a big data scenario. And all this while we talked about function and building an app, which means that you need to rely on a runtime which can help you write those codes. So today, as we speak, we support .NET, so .NET Core and .NET 6 onwards, even .NET 4. And then we have that Node.js for JavaScript developers. Node.js is the way you can build a function using Node uh, if you come from a JavaScript background. Java is also another programming language we support in function. And then PowerShell is something very interesting for automation activity where you need to do some automation activity. You can use PowerShell to run uh, build a function. So you don't need to. If you come from pure infrastructure background and you have no exposure to programming language, never mind. You can still run a function using your full PowerShell skill. Python is obviously a choice because Python is one of the most popular programming languages available today. So we support Python as well. Let's see how we can use Visual Studio Code to uh, build a function. And to do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the official documentation page where it's essentially it tells you how to do this. So uh, there are a couple of settings you need to make um, to be to to uh, work with this kind of model. So if I go back here and go to this tab where I have opened Azure Functions, it's a landing landing page for Azure Functions. So you can see that it's under Azure, uh, Azure Function Documentation, and it talks about the concept and get started, and then you have that Visual Studio Code, so the quick starts. And if you click any of the quick starts, it basically takes you straight away to, to setting up uh, your Visual Studio Code. So it basically tells you what all you need. You need .NET 6 SDK, Azure Function Core Tool, that is version 4x, Visual Studio Code, C Sharp extension, Azure Function extension. So all of them listed here are free of cost. So you can have Visual Studio Code deployed. So like what I have. So let me open my Visual Studio Code. And if I may open the Visual Studio Code, OK, and then I'll show you a couple of things here. So you have this Azure function extension. So you need this Azure function extension. I have got few additional extension installed. So, and I will show you the C sharp extension also installed, right? So it is installed. So this means that I don't have to install, so it is there. You have um, all the things you can just go ahead and uh, follow the instruction, and it will help you configure the Visual Studio code for your function development. Once you have that, what you can do, you can say that I want to open a folder. Let me open the folder. And this is a brand new folder. There is no code here. So what I can do, I can go ahead and create a function. Now, using the command palette, control shift P, Azure functions. Create a new project. So first, we need to uh, write the code here. So I just select this folder. And you can see that they, these are all supported programming languages. I go ahead with the C sharp. And then you have these .NET runtimes. And then you choose the trigger, how this function can be triggered. So for the simple um, 
HTTP trigger, I will select this that essentially will have a URL when I finally deploy the function and I can just call the URL, do a post or get and then function will be triggered. So that's the HTTP trigger. You can name it. I just leave it like that. You can give a namespace to the container and then you can choose anonymous, which means that you don't have to worry about too much about the access, etc. But you see that uh, the function is kind of uh, ready. Now, this is a very simple function. You can even run the function from here, right? So I can just restore it. So it's basically asking me to restore all the dependencies from NuGet. So once I restore it, this red screen will, will be gone. And then I can run this and by saying the start debugging. And then you can also use the function CLI, which is installed here to run the function called um, func start and that's the same thing which is happening here at this point in time it basically running the code if everything is fine the function will be running locally so at this point when we are talking we haven't really deployed the function in azure right and it'll give you an url which is basically a local host with a port mapping if i click on that right you will see a browser opening up Let me copy this, run it here, and run it side by side so that you can see the, the log here, right? So you will see that right now it is here. If I just run this trigger, you can see something happening at this point in time. It is running. So this triggered function executed successfully, and then you can see the output. Now, there are a couple of things you can do with this. So let me. There is a query, it supports name query string. So if I just change the URL to name, and then I say this, what it's essentially he will have that there is a different message, and you can see that this also shows up in here in the trigger. So I can uh, just say Azure Pass, and it's gonna go ahead Azure Pass. So basically, this function is right now working locally. And I can test it without deploying that into my um, and this is HTTP trigger. So every time I call this URL, it's gonna go ahead and trigger the function, right? So you can see that function is working the moment I hit either refresh and open it in a browser or somewhere else. I call this URL. Now I close this and I stop debugging, right? So I say run, stop debugging, and I just maximize this. I can directly upload this into my Azure. So one of the things you need is an ability to log into Azure. So I'm already logged into Azure using my credential. That's one number one. And then if you open the uh, command palette, what you can do, you can just do the sign in if you're doing it for the first time. And um, in the Azure function, so if you say Azure functions, and then you say that uh, deploy to a function app. Okay, so if you say so, it'll show you the list of function apps you may have. So if you have created a function app already in Azure, you can pick up from there. If you do not have any, right, and then uh, you can say Azure functions, and you can say create a function. Uh, so. So let me say Azure Functions. And then you can say that create a function app in Azure. That's the number one. And they're asking you to add the value. So WG func is a demo. Should be the unique URL. It should be globally unique. I want to run .NET 6. I want to run it in East US. And it's going to go ahead and create this Azure function in that region. So you can see that activity log is showing up. Uh, there will be step-by-step -step action. It will create a um, couple of things to host this Azure function. And it is using a standard LRS. So you can't control a lot of things from here. So if you have to choose something, you have, should go to the Azure portal or use the Azure CLI to 
deployed as your function not from here so you should remember that thing that you uh, will be able to create and then once this function is created you can just deploy it by pointing to that function and it'll start working for you All right so it's almost there so probably we can wait uh, this uh, az function uh, wg function demo and choose the function when we use this visual studio code to deploy this function so you should be able to see the output um, of the activity um, happening as your activity log is streaming the live activity happening in azure so i'm not going to the azure portal and doing things over there i can control that from this uh, visual studio code once i'm logged in through the visual studio code while i'm building the code for that so i haven't written this code so i just picked up the the default template and then i'm i can deploy this application to azure the moment i'm okay with this code right so you can see that it's, it's kind of done all this this part is the function right if i click on this link and it opens the link in the side window and you should be able to see nothing much because there is no code deployed yet so what i can do i can deploy this code okay so what i um, can do now deploy to a function app and this time you'll find the third function showing up in the list and this is gonna go ahead and ask me whether i want to re-erase everything and deploy it and it's gonna go and start uh, building that source code create the executables like dlls and on this supporting files put it in a publish folder and then copy the folder to the azure function app right and then you will be able to see the the output window right so it's showing starting deployment this is the url i said right so now next time when i open this url it is showing 502 next time when i open this url it's not gonna show this because there'll be some code to run so you can see that it's a it's now creating a zip package and then it will deploy that so step by step activity is happening you don't have to do them manually you can and there is nothing stops you to do that but you have now tool support to enable you to do the devops way of working you can even use the github actions to perform this so if you have the source code in github and then you can build a github action to deploy that code to azure functions the moment you do a check-in and then it's successfully reviewed and uh, uh, the pull request is there so it's saying that yes it is stream logs so let's stream the log from azure function now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to open this url refresh this url again and this should show something up right you can see that it's showing welcome this and if you remember that i have this name parameter which it can read and then if i just type this it's gonna go ahead and show my name right so this is a function um, with a name so let me just quickly check what is the name of the function so if i go into this home functions this function and you have the functions right http trigger one is the function right so i'll go to this then so you can see that this is now working right as expected one two three and this function is working so you can see that this is also picking up this log streaming you can 
Azure function is there. So you can see that this function is having a public URL. So if you use the same URL at your end, you will be able to see the same output, right? Because this is a publicly available URL. I put it an anonymous uh, uh, thing for the function, so you should not have any any issue running this publicly. But to protect it, you should be allowing some sort of logging and then validation. Essentially, when you build an API using function, you put it behind as your API management to control the behavior of who can access what and also uh, monetize with the, with the thing or throttle it based on the usage pattern. So with this, I want to thank you for watching this interesting demo on Azure Function. You could do a lot of magic using Azure Function. Go ahead and do explore and find a use case and try to implement. That's the way how you can learn better any product. Have a great day. Bye-bye.